This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the religious broadcast services of the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Durham, North Carolina. It is our hope and prayer that as these services come to you this morning, you will be blessed by the ministry of song, the preaching of the word, and all that God has in store for us today. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we come again in thy name. Thank you for another day that you've allowed us to see. Lord, as we embark upon this time of worship, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be present with us, that it will tabernacle with us. Let all that we do be done to your glory and to your honor. Bless us that we might be a blessing to others. We shall forever give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. At this time we're going to be blessed with music from the priest.
chapter 12. I want to begin reading at verse 1. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, mm -hmm. anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Mm -hmm. This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this day of my burial. For the poor you will have with you always, but me you do not have always. Speak, Lord, for your people hear it. Amen. For the time that is ours, this morning for preaching, I want to talk about extravagant love. Right. Extravagant love. The other day I was listening to the radio and a Valentine's Day ad came on. The announcer was suggesting to the men that on this Valentine Day that we should go beyond the ordinary of giving roses or chocolates and do something extravagant in order to show our love for our significant other. The ad went on to suggest that we could do that by buying a gift certificate to a day spa. The announcer went on to say, what better way to show your love? I, I thought about it, a, a gift certificate to a day spa, why would you want to spend all day at the spa? <laughs> I, I, I'm just talking to myself, don't nobody listen to me. <laughs> In our text for today, we find a woman with some extravagant love. Mm -hmm. Webster defines the word extravagant as exceeding the limits of reason or necessity, liking in moderation, balance, and restraint extremely or excessively elaborate, spending much more than necessary, profuse, unreasonably high in price, or excessive. This is what we see from Mary in our text. As this text unfolds, Jesus has arrived in Bethany, the town where Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead by Jesus, lived. And upon arriving in Bethany, according 
to Mark's gospel in the 14th chapter, in the third verse, Jesus entered the house of Simon the leper, where dinner was being given in Jesus' honor. Now, now I want you to get this. Uh, Jesus is in the home of a leper. Uh, somebody put pen right there for a moment. I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that Jesus is willing to go into some places that others deem unclean. Can, can I put it another way? I, I, I'm, I'm glad that that Jesus is not so holy that he is unwilling to engage a filthy sinner like me. Amen. Now, now I, I ask you to put a pen there because I, I, I want to illustrate the point that no matter what your condition is, if you invite him, Jesus will come in. I wish I had a witness. Now, now, now the reality of the text is that Jesus is in the home of Simon the leper. Uh -huh. But Simon is no longer a leper. Yeah. For he has been healed by Jesus. Yeah. Ain't it funny how folk will look at you and always talk about what you used to be. <laughs> but they never see you as you really are. Yeah. For folk to look at you and they, oh, oh, uh, they, they, they this, that, and the other, and, and they can talk about what you used to be, and they can talk about how you used to act and how you used to conduct yourself. But I don't know about you. I'm glad that when folk look at you one way, the Lord will look at you another way. See, the Lord does not see you how you were, but the Lord sees you how you will become. I, 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 want to get, I want you to get this picture. Can't you just imagine? Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus is there. Uh, Simon, the former leper, is there. Mm -hmm. And Lazarus is there. Yes. And, and they're sitting around the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Three guys. And you know some stories are being told. Can, can, can't you just imagine Simon and Lazarus trying to one up each other? S Simon probably saying to Lazarus, man, I'm glad Jesus is here because Jesus made me whole. And Lazarus said, man, that ain't nothing. You glad that he made you whole. He made you whole, but he got me out of a hole. Yeah. Ain't nobody praying with me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so they go back and forth, and, and Jesus is in the midst, and, and, and Jesus is laughing and, and, and carrying on. I, I'm glad that, that when you're in the presence of the Lord, you can still have a good time. Yeah. 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 They, they, they're carrying on. And... Uh, as the meal continues, the text says that Mary enters the room and took a pound of very expensive perfume which was contained in an alabaster jar, broke the jar and poured it on Jesus' head and his feet and then wiped his feet with her hand. And the Bible says that the whole house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Yeah, yes. now, now watch this. No sooner had Mary done this, she was rebuked by Judas. But the Lord was quick to honor her. According to Mark 14, 9, Jesus says, I tell you the truth that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Yeah. Yeah. Let me suggest to you that Mary's actions and offering toward Christ demonstrated 
extravagant love. And I, I believe that there are at least four insights that we can glean from this text about extravagant love. First of all, extravagant love is precious to us. Let me say that again. It's precious to us. An offering that honors the Lord must first be something that's dear to us. Can I make it even plainer? Don't give the Lord some stuff that you don't want yourself. And I might put some caveat on that. Don't even give other folks stuff that you don't want to see. When Mary brought her offering, it was precious to her. She, she brought the equivalent of one year's salary and poured it upon Christ. It was well beyond what, what many thought would have been reasonable, but not Mary. You see, Mary... Uh, was center stage only three times in scripture and each time she's at our Lord's feet. In Luke 10 38, she sat at his feet to hear his word. In John 11, she knelt at his feet in sorrow over the death of her brother Lazarus. And in the text, she comes and brings with her an offering. My brothers and sisters, let me suggest to you that there's no better place to be found than at the feet of Jesus. We, we see Mary at Jesus' feet. Uh, we, we see her there in times of joy and in times of sorrow. We see her there in times of receiving and in times of giving. We see her there uh, when the sun is shining and we see her when clouds are gathering. And each time we see her there, she is motivated by love. And in the text, her motivation is displayed by extravagant love. Yes. Yes. And extravagant love is precious to us. Now notice, if you will, that Mary didn't spare any cost in showing love for Jesus. Uh, some perhaps would have argued that Mary could have used just a few drops on Jesus. Uh, ladies, y'all know about some of that perfume y'all wear. You, you, you don't have to use half a bottle, in, particularly if it's good stuff. Uh, all you got to do is put on a couple of drops. Talk back to me if you can. And, 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 and just a few drops are, are, are sufficient enough that uh, the, the fragrance of the drops will permeate the whole atmosphere. Now, sometimes you put too many drops. And, 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 and sometimes your odor arrives in the room before you get there. Come on now, talk to me if you can. Uh, uh, but, but, but Mary spared no cost in showing love. Uh, nothing she had was too precious to give to Jesus. Uh, her, her love was motivated by an understanding that all she had belongs to the Lord. And an extravagant love is precious. It was precious to her. And she wanted to give that which she, was, which she had that was precious to her to Jesus. You see, Mary understood that sometimes that something we ought to understand and that there is nothing too precious for our Lord. Amen. Now, now, now watch this. Not only did she pour expensive perfume on Jesus, but she used her glory to wipe Jesus' feet. Look at the text. Verse 3 says that she wiped Jesus' feet with her hand. 1 Corinthians 11, 15 suggests that a woman's hair is her glory. And so Mary used her glory to glorify Jesus. Uh, ladies, Mary wasn't concerned about her weave. She, she wasn't concerned about her perm. She wasn't concerned about her dreads. All she was concerned about was giving her best to the Lord and ultimately that's what extravagant love is all about. Giving that which is precious by us to someone. So the first thing we see 
is that extravagant love is precious to us. But then secondly, extravagant love is not only precious to us, but it's pleasing to others. Yeah. Look at text. Verse 3 says that the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Yeah. The whole house, not just the room in which they were seated. In other words, Mary's gift, her offering, had an effect on everyone who was present. Sooner or later, everyone in the house would know what had been done. That's how extravagant love is when, when you give uh, yourself to Jesus in a powerful way. It creates an aroma uh, that's inviting and the sense just permeates the room and the space and, 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 and whoever is in the space is blessed by the aroma of your gift. Uh, uh, it, it, it's blessed. This, this, this act of, 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 of anointing Jesus, uh, the power of the odor of the preferred fume was so powerful that everybody was blessed. And, and, and when you give the Lord the best that you have, not only is it a blessing for you to be able to give, not only is it a blessing from the Lord, but others are blessed. This, this act will speak for itself. No, no, nobody had to ask if they were in that house what happened. Uh, nobody asked them to say what had happened was. No. They knew that something special had happened. Extravagant love creates a pleasant aroma that has the capacity to draw others. And so the extravagant love is pleasant to others and is precious to us. But then third, extravagant love is perplexing to some. Look, look at the text. In verses 4 through 6, this love is perplexing to Judas's character. He, he rebuked Mary. He, he suggested that the perfume uh, could have been used in a more efficient and effective way that it could have been sold and the proceeds given to the poor. But you got to be careful in listening to what some folks say because they'll say something that sounds good on the surface. But when you dig down deeper, you understand that they've got ulterior motives. Uh, Judas wasn't concerned about no poor. He, he was he, he, he was the treasurer. He was perplexed that this beautiful act of love uh, was so wasteful. He, he, he wanted to sell it. And that sounds good. It sounds like let's sell it and, and give it to the poor. But, but, but keep in mind, he ain't really concerned. All he's concerned about is getting money in the treasury. So he can take it and use it for his own purpose. You know, it's an abomination when people give their gifts to the Lord only to have some dishonest folk use for their personal gain what folk have given for kingdom purposes. And the Lord deals with them. The Lord deals with them. The reality is that, that that's where that, that's where he was. He wasn't concerned. Judas wasn't concerned about the poor. He was concerned about how he could embezzle. And I can't tell somebody that those of us who are most likely to be disgusted by your extravagance are typically folk who are only concerned about themselves. They, they don't want you to give extravagantly because it might show them up. That, that's I don't know why you're doing all of that. Uh, 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 they, they are afraid. See, they talk a good game, but, but they are afraid that your gift and your giving might show them up. Extravagant love will always be perplexing somebody. Somebody saying, I don't know why. Uh, they, they not having church. They ain't burning as many lights now as they used to burn. They ain't got to burn the air and the heat now during the pandemic, so we don't need to give as much money. And, and those are the very so 
know that, that, that complain is perplexing why you can continue to give. They, they, they somehow didn't read over there where it says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Extravagant love is precious, it's pleasant. But then there's a final thing about extravagant love. It's not only precious to us, pleasant to others, perplexing to some, but extravagant love is pleasing to Christ. Look, look, look at the text. The only voice that's heard in favor of what Mary did was the voice of the one that mattered. Jesus said, let her alone. Why? Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing for me. I, I, I'm so glad that Jesus will always validate our extravagant love. Mary was willing to give to Jesus the best that she had. And whenever you give the Lord the best that you have, the Lord will always be pleased. Do I have a witness? The hymn writer said, if when you give the best of your service, then he comes to the end of it and he says, he'll understand and say, well done. I, I got a clothes, but as a clothes, I want to share a true story about a nine-year-old boy who lived in rural Tennessee. One Saturday afternoon, a church that had a bus ministry in that area stopped by the house where the little boy lived. And when the bus pastor knocked on the door, the little boy came to the front door. The bus pastor asked him if his parents were home, and the little boy answered that his parents were not at home. The boy went on to say that every Weekend, his parents would take off and leave him at home to care for his little brother. Well, the bus pastor asked him if he could come in, and the little boy said yes. He went in and sat down on an old couch with foam and spring exposed. The bus pastor said to the boy, where do you go to church? And the boy responded, I've never been to church in my whole life. And the bus pastor said to him, well, it's more important that you allow Jesus to come into your life than it is for you just to walk into the church. The bus pastor shared the gospel with the young boy, told him, that Jesus loved him. Yeah. Told him that Jesus died for him. Yeah. Asked him if he wanted to invite Jesus into his heart. Yeah. The young man opened his heart and invited Jesus in and was saved. The bus pastor asked him, do you want to go to church yeah. on the Mario? So I'll come by and pick you up. Yeah, the boy agreed and the next morning, the bus came by, right. but the house was dark. Yeah. The bus pastor knocked on the door, and the young man was still in the bed. He finally got up, got dressed, got on the bus, and went to this large church. It was the first time he had been in the church. Right. Finally, they began to take the offering. They passed the offering place down the road. Yes, the young man reached in his pocket, but he didn't have anything uh -huh. to give. Uh -huh. When the offering plate got to him, he held it for just a moment or two uh -huh. and then passed it on down his pew uh -huh. at the end of the road. And the usher received it. And at the end of the giving period, the ushers came forward, brought the offering plates, and poured them in a big basket at the front of the church. The young boy got up, walked up to the front, told the preacher, I gave my life to the Lord yesterday. I came to church today. I didn't have anything that I wanted to give. 
Sinking to rise, oh 
smile upon you. 